Good morning ladies and gentlemen, my name is Napoleon Total and today we're back with another Enlisted News episode and today we have a lot of hell good stuff. Of course, these are going to be most notably the new levels, weapon upgrades, and mechanics for vehicles, but that said, without further ado, let's get started with today's video. In the number one spot, or should I say the first one we have, is update 0.4.7.44. It fixes a bug that causes scope magnification for engineer built and anti-tank and anti-aircraft guns to work incorrectly. And of course, the scope magnification is also very important, but do you know what is also important? Like and subscribing to the channel. And join the Discord, but that's it, let's get on with making list a better place, number 45. And it just changes optics and adjustments. They essentially corrected the optics on the T-3485 BT-7 BM-824, which is basically the Mini Katusha, and their Panzer IIF. And they also magnetize engineer structure, so basically if you pick up a weapon near an ammo crate or destruction, you've been familiar with the problem. Instead of picking up the weapon, you start destroying the structure. So basically what this fixes is the fact that if you have a hedgehog and an ammo crate, you decide to press F to get your ammo, while you instead will try to essentially destroy the hedgehog, which you don't want because you don't want the ammo, if that makes sense. But that said, let's move on to new mechanics for repairing armor vehicles, and from what it states, basically what's going to happen is that if your gun is knocked out, you have to go up to the tank and start fixing the gun. And it won't ever be to fix the entire thing and everything will be fixed, no, um, hopefully, hopefully. It does make some more sense, and hopefully what will happen is that repair kits will contain 8 repairs, so you can fix a lot more stuff. Another thing is the fact that, um, basically if your engine breaks out, like I said, with the gun, you can also just fix the engine. But you also might want to fix the gun after the enemy in front of you is dead or when you're in a safe spot. But that said, let's move on to weapon sound upgrades, and this is just a lot of weapon sound upgrades, and there's a lot of fixes I would say. They also changed the Gewehr 41, and yeah, that's also very interesting. Like, the Gewehr 41, it has new systems, um, so basically from what I've been seeing on the video, once you fire a shot, you can also essentially reload. No, like seriously, you can reload by just putting the bullets in separately. So that's very, very good. Another thing is the differences on the bolt-action rifles, which is also amazing. But that said, it also says at the end, we have more dev blogs coming soon, which translate to that uh, there's more stuff. And speaking of more stuff, we have the new levels. So, this is actually my first time looking at this, and I'm just gonna tell you off the bat that this is my first reaction. So, in the Pacific, we have the Allies, and they're getting the M1 Thompson, which is, uh, well, the M1 Thompson. The Japanese are getting the Type 100 Fleet. Now, I'm definitely going to be getting this thing, because it has 920 rounds per minute, fully upgraded, and the bayonet is also a good thing. Also, it is indigenously Japanese, and yeah, definitely going to be using that. So, that's very interesting. The Battle of Berlin, we have the IS-2 1944. This is what I've been literally suggesting. Thank God they do it. Um, yes, it's the slope frontal armor, which is going to make the entire thing hell. It has the Dushka on top, which is essentially the entire Russian-slash-Soviet thing from War Thunder, and the entire thing is pretty good. They have also put, uh, essentially the Soviet beds on the sides as essentially like cages to protect the tank from Panzerfaust. That in actuality never works, but we don't know from Enlisted, uh, they might just add something weird. For the Germans, we have the Tiger 2H now. Like I said, this is way better than the Porsche because the frontal armor on the turret is actually going to be beefed up and it's not going to be that crappy armor on the Porsche. So that's going to be better. The hull armor is also the, pretty much the same and I think they also did something with the side skirts by adding tracks, which does technically in theory help a little bit but only a little bit. That said, we have the most interesting thing that I'm definitely going to be using. That is the AS-44. Now, for those people who are like, what the heck, I just bought the AS-44 squad? Yeah, I'm sorry guys, um, you could have just gotten in the game. The AS-44 is essentially the predecessor of the AK-47 with a bayonet this time, so it literally looks like a Soviet uh, slash, well, Cold War era submachine gun. 
well, should I say assault rifle at this point. The Axis get the SDG-44, once again, I'm also going to be using this, no surprise. And that's going to be Berlin, so very good, uh, IS-2, 1944, Tiger-2, AS-44, and STG-44. Invasion of Normandy. Now, these are going to be very lackluster, um, we have the M4A-2, 76W. Of course, the M4A-2 is no jumble, but the tank... The, should I say, the anti-tank gun, or should I say the 76mm gun, is pretty decent at its job. The Panther G, on the other hand, is also quite famous in the sense that the Panther G has uh, essentially better armor than the previous Panther. It still has the old reliable 75mm gun. Now, the question is, would I be using this or the Tiger? Obviously, I'll be using the Tiger and the M4A2. Once again, I'd rather use a Jumbo, so the Invasion Normandy levels are one of the weakest. But that said, that's all for this video. Very, very good development, should I say. From what Enlisted it looks like to be doing, they are apparently just trying to add new levels so they can essentially balance out the campaigns, make or finish the campaigns, and then once the progression hits, they can just modify. Also, I would also like to note to you guys that they haven't added anything for Tunisia, which makes sense. And they haven't added anything for Stalingrad, nor Moscow, which also kind of does make sense. Because, well, for Moscow, what are they going to add? For Tunisia, if they add anything Italian or British, which everyone wants, then the entire comment section is going to be like, why don't you make a British or Italian tech tree, which is going to cause them more work. And there's no stalling grab because everyone hates the campaign, and I think Enlisted has either figured that out, or... I mean, they could just put a new levels from Stalingrad, Tunisia, and Moscow, like, because this is technically still in development. And if unless it just adds new levels, there's no one to stop them. But that's it. That's all for this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and join the Discord. I'll see you in the next one.